be like the prophets that just died I, before tomorrow comes, Elijah. I will see to it personally that you are assassinated. Elijah got scared, Brother James. The Bible said he had fear and he ran. Days he run. He run so much. And this is what happens in our lives, Sister Joab. We run ourselves to death. And I'm talking about a spiritual death. We have nothing left, Brother Keith. We can't hear the voice because we've got so many voices elsewhere coming in. We've got background noise and all kinds of noise of the world. And we don't hear the whisper. And you know what the whisper is saying? Move. Go to the Lord. Jesus had fed him. I love that story. He woke up because Jesus touched him. How many of y'all have been touched and woke up by the Lord God himself? Hallelujah. Give him a praise for that one. How many times has God woke you from making a mistake in your life? Or how many times has God woke you, reached out and touched you when you heard something that was just a face shaker and you didn't know what was coming next or what was going to happen? How many times has Jesus reached down and touched you when you was in a deep sleep from worry of depression or, or, or discouragement or how about your finances or your marriage or how about the kids that are down at the beaches right now living it up and nothing, not knowing from one day to the next if they're going to stay there. And what I mean by that is by death. How many parents, when this spring breaks over, is going to not have their children coming home like they left. It only takes one pill, one drink, <coughs> one party. I heard one girl say the. Uh, she said, I, I, I'm not doing nothing but eating a couple eggs at night and then I'm going to party till I black out every day I'm here. This is the next generation. I guarantee you that 50% of the ones that are down there, I can't say 90, I can't say 100, because the next generation that was after us began to be lukewarm and serve God to impress her because they felt they needed to. But the minute they got their own home and became their own authority, they stopped going to the authority, and that's Jesus Christ. The church began to empty in the late 80s and the early 90s. That's when the church began. In other words, their parents probably doesn't even mention God at all. But some of those kids that are down there know who Jesus is. Some of them has given their heart to him, but they're in an environment that they are they're in the house of Father. They didn't go down there to see the beach and the sand. They went down there to party because they know that's what everybody else is doing. You see, what the devil does is he wants you to follow the leader. But the problem is he's not the leader. Jesus is. Amen. And they're not, not a single one of them, Sister Joanne, mm -hmm. will hear the whisper. Mm -hmm. Why? Do you honestly think that the whisper of the Holy Ghost is going to be a part of that? I'll tell you when they'll hear it. They'll hear it that next morning if God's allowed them to see another day. Jesus will reach and touch and wake them up and say, you need to stop. You need to go home. I've been there, done that. I know this to be true. At the beginning of every day, the, 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 the angel would touch me and say, you need to stop and you need to go home. You don't need to be here. This isn't your land. This isn't your land. This isn't where I told you to be. That's what the angel of the Lord was telling Elijah. What are you doing here, Elijah? You are supposed to be where they are, where you run from. Forty days and forty nights journey back to where he was supposed to be. What does that mean, Sister Melba? When we find ourselves somewhere like Elijah where we're not supposed to be, we have to double back. We have to double back because that's what the whisperer says. Go home. Where is home? Wherever the Lord has sent you. This is our home. This is our home. This is where God 
has sent us to serve him. Sister Joanne, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have believed it 10 years ago if you'd have told me that I was going to be the pastor of this church. <clears throat> I wasn't even at this church. I was serving in another one. But when the whisper speaks, we must hear. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, Brother James, how many blessings are we missing? Simply because we're not listening to the whisper. What if, what if tonight I had decided I can't, I, I'm not rushing, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to sit down a minute. I'm going to relax. I'm going to get some of me time. I'll have time to take a shower then and go to church. That's not what the whisper said. The whisper said, go to Mary. Now, I didn't know why. I thought maybe just to encourage her. I had no idea that I was going to leave my beloved sister to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Now, listen to this, because this is what I told her. I said, Miss Mary, do you realize what you've done? You've done something that many of your age that has spent three quarters of their life in the church, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, if they go, sitting there, not knowing for sure whether they're saved. They hear the message, and, and but here's the thing. They're too embarrassed to get up and come down to the altar mm -hmm. and make sure they know that they know because God doesn't want you to have a hope so salvation. He wants you to have a no so salvation. Can I get an amen? I said, how many, Miss Mary? How many? I said, that is my biggest fear. That is my biggest fear in any church of how many of the congregation just knows their names in that book and Jesus hasn't wrote it yet. That's a scary thought. That's a scary thought. I said, but you know, don't you? And she said, absolutely. I said, Miss Mary, I want to say, I want to say something to you, Mr. Allen. Because what happened to me today with that woman, I will never forget the rest of my life. You see, I had a number one salvation where I had led somebody to Christ. It was that old uh, black fellow that had broke down over in Jackson, and I pulled over, and I helped him change his tire. And before it was over, we were both on the ground and he was giving his life to Jesus. And that was my number one. Not anymore. I said, Miss Mary, you are now the undefiled, undefeated champion of my salvation. To be able to lead you to Christ, my sister, as much as I love you and that man sitting in that chair, this is the biggest honor of my walk yet. I cherish it. To hold her little frail hand as she shook and was saying the words and meaning them and knowing for sure now she will never burn. I said, you never die. You are just going to be promoted. Here's something else I want you to understand. She heard the whisper too. Otherwise, she wouldn't have had me sit down and tell me she needed to talk to me. You see, when the whisper speaks, when the, the, there's always two involved. Most of the time, when God speaks to you, it's in reference to you and somebody else. You know what sickens me, Brother James? How many whispers did I not hear? This was an eye-opener for me. I need to find my quiet room and stay in. I want to hear everything God's got to say. Amen? I want y'all to stand with me. You, I, I can't, I still haven't come down yet. I can't explain to y'all what happened to me in the house. It, it, the Holy Ghost was there. I knew it. I felt it when I walked in, Brother Keith. I knew God was there. I didn't, I mean, 
There's a reason why he was crying like a baby. He heard it. He heard it. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Or maybe you are. Or maybe you will. Or maybe she will. But the seed has been planted. We thank you, Lord God, that you send a whisper. You send a whisper, Father God, so that we can yes, acknowledge, Father hallelujah. God, that we can believe, Father God, that we can have faith, Lord God, that we can receive, Lord God. Yes. So that we do not have fear, Lord God, because you have commanded us not to be fearful of anything, Amen. Lord God. You're in our life, Lord God. You're with us. You're not against us, Father God. You're beside us, Lord God. You never leave, nor do you forsake us. And so, Father God, we ask you tonight, Father God, first of all, we give the victory, Lord God, for Miss Mary, what took place tonight, yes, Lord God, what took place. Hallelujah. We give the victory, Father God, for using Pastor Darrell, Lord God, to lead her to yes, the Lord, Lord, to rededicate her so life, much. Father God. And Lord God, we just believe, Father God, that Mr. Adams is going to follow pretty soon, too, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we pray that in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, Lord God. We pray, Father God, tonight, Lord God, as we leave this sanctuary, but never from your sight, yes. that you keep us covered with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord God, we just take this message out to the highways and byways, yes. that all may come to know Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. Yes. And it's in his holy name that we pray, Lord God. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. And here's one more thing. Those two have been married longer than I am old. I went through that, how they were soulmates and how close they was and how he was her caretaker. What she done in front of him, he can't deny. He can't say he didn't know. That was a bold move. 